I'm going to talk a little bit about the control system in the display, which is located here in the upright in the middle of the machine. Um, the display is located here, like we talked about, which communicates with the controllers and the engine controller, which are up underneath the panel that was referenced a little bit earlier um, in that system. It also is working with the electronics and the fuse brake and the panel that's got the fuses and the relays in it, along with all the systems that controls the cooling of the system, um, the engine variable fan that's on there, and all of the hydraulics that make the machine function. Um, through the display, we can access stuff about the engine, faults that may be happening in the electronic system that will be displayed here that you can access, look at those. We can also see things about the fuel performance of the engine. Um, also included in that would be where the machine is as far as level, the base of the machine, the bottom half, and the upright. There are two sensors, one that is also located underneath here with the rest of the electronics, and one located underneath on the upright. And through that, we allow the system to uh, access certain things and keep it safe when you're on level ground so we know where it's at. Um, part of those control systems would be as the machine is driving and you narrow up the wheels and you start to raise the boom, you might hear a beeper go off that is telling you that you have reached a limit. We will no longer let you move the wheels in any farther or raise the boom. To correct that, you either have to right, widen out the wheels or bring the boom back down. That's part of the safety system that's concluded in the machine. There's also a state that if you were to trim and the saw were to turn off and the beeper comes on solid, that means you've reached an extreme rate of unsafe and we'd like to bring the machine back and turning the saw off as part of that signal and the beeper going solid. Also in, the, in here is the uh, ability to know uh, the serial number of this machine. So if you were to call up our service center, they can help you walk through to find that if they need to know that. The revision of the code that is being used on this machine, if for some reason we need to know that to help troubleshoot it, that would be available to you. And also to go in and do some troubleshooting, if you were on the phone with our service center, they could maybe ask you what an input or an output is doing. You could access that to see what that live data is while the machine is or is not operating, depending on what needs to be trouble, trouble, troubleshot during that time. Included in the electronic control system is a Bluetooth device that will allow connection over somebody's cell phone to probably our service center or somebody else that may be able to dial into this machine to help further troubleshooting if that's required in the field. Also here in the center part of the machine along with the display is the upright turntable located just underneath the yellow part here with the hydraulic motor that turns it. The uh, upright will turn 360 degrees but there is a stop that will not allow you to go continuous. Um, it, that protects the hoses and the wiring that's in the center section of the machine. Down below the the turntable are two rotary actuators, one that allows the upright to move forward and back, and the other one, which is a little bit lower, moves it to move left to right or side to side. Um, all these items do have grease points on them, so as you're maintenance in your machine, make sure you grease those items uh, as required. Um, behind the, uh, in the area of the display behind is a flow meter. This device is used to ensure that the saw is spinning at the right speed. Um, that would be used to make an adjustment if required or during a service they may ask you to check what that is set at to verify things are operating correctly. And then higher up we have the two hose reels that supply oil up to the hose reels that are, go up into the boom so as the boom extends the hoses can move in and out to provide rotation for the saw and the saw motor to spin. To move back a little bit from the center section we have uh, the part here that is part of the articulation for the steering of the machine that you will see that uh, also has grease points that need to be greased as you, as you go along. And behind that we will have part of the hydraulic system that maybe uh, we'll talk about a little bit later that talks about the, how the traction control will work on this machine. And then behind that we have an enclosure that encloses the hydraulic cooler, the cooling fan for the hydraulics, and the temp sensor which is into the hydraulic tank. Um, all that information could be uh, run up here to access on the display as far as what the hydraulic temperature is and able to test this fan in forward and reverse while the engine is running to verify that it works properly and do a manual clean out if you wanted to do that. As we move back a little bit farther behind the uh, steering pivot of the machine, there is another function that is for oscillation or sometimes referred to as rear axle float, which allows the rear axle to float and this is used while the boom is in the cradle and you're driving down, for example, down into a ditch, it allows all four wheels to be in contact with the ground. That makes the best propeller performance. Once you were to come to a stop and you are no longer driving the machine and your hands are off the joystick, the brakes will lock on the wheels and this rear oscillation or axle float will also lock. 
allowing you to raise the boom out of the cradle, which helps prevent the machine in safety situations so it doesn't want to roll over. One thing to know there that that while propelling that will be open and allow the axle to float, but once you stop and the brakes are set, that will be disabled. All right, a little bit about the drive system on, on the Mini. It um, starts up in front with the control valve that's underneath the panel here and includes a manifold here in the middle that controls the brakes on the motor system and a manifold here in the rear that controls our traction control on the machine. When driving the machine, you may see corner wheels working together um, unless you were to use the differential lock control system on here, which will make all the wheels work together. Um, part of that drive system is to ensure that you can put the most traction down to the ground when needed, um, but only activated the diff lock when you use the button. It's not an automatic thing. You have to turn it on and off via the radio remote and only hold it when you need to and don't hold it long for long periods of time, which uh, can create excessive heat in your hydraulic system if not required.